Hey folks, let's talk audio again. So, turntables, right? I've been using this JVC L-E3 direct drive turntable for years now because this particular Sony PS-X5 has been out of service for years now, probably since 2011 or 2012 when it developed a hum I couldn't get rid of. Managed to fix the hum eventually but the little interconnect board inside these is made of such trash that if you just apply normal soldering techniques to it, the pads lift. And you can hardwire that to eliminate that, but these also tend to have tone arm issues. So, this tone arm has an issue where it won't advance. You put the needle into the groove and it won't advance. This turntable has been nothing but trouble since I've owned it, and it has it's sort of my... Um, it's been my listening table for a while, or at least it used to be years ago. The other problem these things have is the cams, the cam that controls the disc size, they like to crack. So it just seems like to me that this turntable is a good performer when it works, but when it doesn't work, it's a bit of a can of worms. And I just don't want to deal with that anymore. I've, I've tried to fix this multiple times, I've gotten help with it, and it just keeps breaking down and breaking down and breaking down, and I've had enough of it. At the same time, I do love this JVC turntable, but the situation with the cartridge and the stylus is a little bit proprietary. You can change tone arms, but it's a proprietary tone arm and a proprietary stylus to this cartridge, meaning that there are no aftermarket styli that are elliptical or circular or what have you. All you can get is conical for this, which so you end up getting more sibilance than you know is necessary and I can hear it in my records on this particular table it's not a bad turntable it has a nice steady motor with a with very little wow and flutter 0.03 uh, percent it doesn't have quartz lock but it's very stable but the Achilles heel is the stylus really the cartridge actually sounds pretty good but the stylus introduces sibilance despite it being linear tracking so conical styli man I, I can't get away from them on this particular table so I need a better listening table than this um, so, you know, that's why I tried to fix the Sony here. Didn't work out. I also have a few other turntables. I have an Audio-Technica ATLP120 here that needs a new tone arm assembly entirely, and that is taking forever to ship. This is my transfer table, so I can't even use my transferring turntable at the moment because it's busted. Um, I do have a newer uh, ATLP 120 that we'll probably be making a video of eventually, but it has the preamp installed in it, which is not a very good preamp, and I don't want to remove it while it's still under warranty, so that's probably going to stay as is until I fix the other ATLP 120 that I have. So my conclusion was that I needed a new listening table. So that's what we're going to take a look at today. It's a new model that just came on the market recently, made by a company called Fluence. This is the Fluence RT83. It uses a walnut, um, uses a walnut finish on MDF board, solid MDF. Uh, it's a pretty heavy turntable. It is belt drive, but a very good belt drive, and we'll delve into that once we take it out of the box here. Okay. This is what you get when you unwrap it. You get a nice bare turntable. Look at that! Isn't that beautiful? 33 off and 45 for the settings there. You get a nice S-shaped tone arm that's weighted, has a uh, anti-skate adjustment, and of course has a raising and lowering lever here. So it's a pretty nice tone arm. And there's the servo-controlled motor. So, some assembly required on this particular turntable. It comes with this manual here. It comes with a set of white gloves for some reason. I'm not sure why that's important, but uh, yeah, I guess we'll wear them anyway just to appease everybody in the audience here. So let's unwrap a bunch of stuff. Little white gloves, cloth gloves. I'm guessing that's to prevent fingerprints from getting on this nice shiny finish. I, I really don't know. But uh, I'm going to wear them anyway just because they're there. Okay, so in the box we get audio cables, a ground cable, a couple of ground cables I think actually. Yeah, I guess you get more than one. That's good. You get a bubble level to help uh, level your turntable. 
and this is the cover for the motor over there so that should probably go on and of course here you get the rubber mat that comes with the turntable which is good rubber mats tend to dampen things pretty well so let me get this out of here okay here's the metal uh, plat the metal platter that I pulled out of the bag there stupid tape okay so what you do is you match the triangle on the motor cover with the triangle on the motor and you drop it down sometimes you might have to spin it okay so it looks like there's more accessories in the styrofoam here that I missed there's a 45 adapter and there's the hinges for the to for the uh, the tone arm wow the um, the uh, dust cover and then over here is the cartridge another hinge and a counterweight so there's more stuff to dig into here so anyway I managed to get this cover on to the motor there and uh, I guess next what we're gonna put on is the platter because the platter is what the belt sits on and it appears that the belt is already on the platter so that's perfect yeah belts already on the platter so it keeps it in sh proper shape I guess and that's what sets this turntable apart from a lot of others uh, on some other belt drives you might see uh, them using the inner part here for the drive belt but this one actually uses the entire platter which is similar to some old Empire turntables from uh, I'd say the late 50s they had a similar mechanism except that you had to move the belt to change the speed look at that that's a good bearing there so then what you do is you take the belt and you put it around the pulley there what you do is you take the belt and you stretch it around this pulley at least in a way that it will actually stay on there you go the belt goes on like that and then the motor controls the speed spin it a few times to make it nice and even perfect now what do we need let's see a platter mat I would say a slip mat rather and the slip mat has a nice Fluence logo on it as you can see there there you go so it's looking pretty good already it's starting to look like a turntable so let me unbutton a lot of these other accessories and we will uh, get started with some more assembly All right. so we've got hinges we've got the head shell with the cartridge pre-mounted in it we've got a counterweight and we have a 45 adapter now the 45 adapter is a weird one they didn't really have a place for this 45 adapter I don't think it goes on top of the motor definitely doesn't there's no little spindle to put the 45 adapter so I guess I just expect you to put it in the middle and just leave it there when you're not using it or put it over here which is probably what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna leave it there but for now we'll put it there so we don't lose it and now what we need to do is to get the tone arm assembled the dust cover look at that beautiful and it damps it's, it's dampened pretty well Look at that, that's a beautiful turntable. Here's the power adapter it comes with, though, funny enough. It just looks like a generic phone charger almost. It does have Fluence written on it, though. This is a 12 volt, 500 milliamp, 6 watt power supply. And it says audio video power supply, so it's probably shielded fairly well uh, and of decent quality, I would hope despite Fluence being slightly boutique brand I would hope that they have some decent power adapters the nice part is it's just a barrel plug so if you need to replace this power adapter you should be able to fairly easily with you know other power adapters you find online and even universal ones and things like that so that's very good nothing crazy or proprietary same with the audio cables everything is standard spade connectors for the ground and RCA connectors for the audio so easy stuff there and of course here's the back of the table 
where you get your audio connectors and you get a ground lug there. There is no preamp built into the RT reference turntable series, unlike the RT80 and 81. Uh, you appear to have an auto stop button there. You can turn the auto stop on and off, which is nice. I want auto stop turned on, so I'm going to turn that on now. Uh, and of course you have your DC input. And we reveal what material this is made out of. It's solid MDF with, uh, with a finish on it. It appears to be lacquered since it's all shiny. Uh, so, since this is MDF, don't get it wet. <laughs> it's completely fine as long as you don't get it wet. And I wouldn't expect a turntable like this to get wet. So I think the material is probably fine. It's in portables that it's more likely to get wet, I would think. So, yeah. Let's connect up the wires, shall we? Yeah. Yeah, you get two different ground uh, spades here, so that's good if you lose one. And, of course you get your audio cables, which should go in there. And I'm going to choose this ground cable here. Undo the twisty. Of course, the ground lug is just a screw, so you just undo it like that. Stick the spade in there, and then tighten it back down. Making sure the spade keeps contact. And there you go. Now you have your ground wire and your audio cables connected. And I'm glad that these are detachable. That makes this a lot easier if your cables go bad, which is a problem I had with the Sony turntable that I had, where the cables went bad, I had to replace the cables, and that in turn did some damage because the turntable was too fragile to even be worked on by somebody, experienced or not. So, yeah, this is a much, much better setup, I think. So, it's easy to, like, remake a cable. Like, let's say you lose a ground, you run out of ground wires. You can just make another one of these. You can buy spade connectors anywhere at the hardware store. So this is stuff is easy to replicate, easy to get a hold of, and easy to remake if you happen to ruin it. And if cables go bad, just replace them. There you go. So I think without further ado, we should plug this thing in. And I should uh, give it a once-over. And here we are. I've set it up. I've leveled it as best I can. It has three feet on the bottom instead of four. It has two in the front, and you can see under there, there's one in the back, and they're on threads, so you can that allows you to level the turntable. There's already dust on this. Wow. I need to fix that problem. All right. I've leveled it as best I could. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. Because um, adjusting the feet doesn't seem to fix that problem very much. Uh, well, adjusting the back foot might actually. I'll give that a shot in a little bit. But I've got it all set up. Uh, looking pretty good. So I'm going to dust off this platter mat and uh, try to level this thing a little bit more. And uh, we'll get on with the show. Okay, now it's level. Look at that bubble level. Got it pretty dead on. So here's the turntable. I have it all hooked up. Let's give the motor a try, shall we? Now it's auto stop, so I think I have to move it over. Yep. Spins nicely. Let's move the, the levers up, actually, so I can just leave it like that. How does 45 look? Nice and smooth. Is there any warpage in the platter or the mat? A little bit, maybe. That's mostly in the mat, so that looks good. Now, if you were to turn that off, it would spin all the time. This thing just gets dusty by looking at it. This is crazy. Oh, well, new stuff. That's what happens, right? So let me put the 45 adapter back there, where it belongs. And there you go. That's the Fluence RT83. Now... The reason I chose this turntable is, be is because of its specs and because the improvements they made over the RT80 and 81 are very good. Uh, the servo-controlled motor is the biggest thing. 
Uh, that gives this belt drive turntable a wow and flutter rating of 0.07%. That is excellent for a belt drive. And as I mentioned before, it uses the uh, it uses the entire platter for the belt, so it's a much more stable system than you would normally see on other tables. Uh, it doesn't use an inner ring, it uses the whole thing, like an old Empire turntable would. So that is pretty darn nice. The only downside I'm seeing is that you can really see the dust collect on this thing uh, when you first get it. It's perfect, and now there's like a little bit of dust on it just because there's dust in the air from moving stuff around, I guess. So that's slightly annoying. Uh, it clearly works. So that's the reason I chose this turntable is because of the improvements they made and because of the phono cartridge they included. Uh, the Orderphone 2M Red is an excellent phono cartridge from what I've heard. I'd like to hear what this sounds like myself and that should make for an excellent listening turntable. So I think this is an answer to Vintage turntables giving me nothing but problems lately. I needed something that works, is new, is backed by a warranty, and I can count on. And this seems like it'll fit the bill. And I'm lucky that Fluence released these a month or two ago uh, to the public. So I'm sort of right on the bandwagon of new here. Uh, I don't know how good or bad that is, but I'm impressed so far. So hopefully, uh, hopefully I continue to be impressed. One of the most important things about setting up a, new, up a new turntable is, of course, weighting the tone arms. So, let's do that on camera, shall we? So, I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way first, where you uh, make it float. So you just unscrew the to you unscrew the weight enough for the tone arm to float. Now it's up too much. Not quite floating yet. Now it's going down too much. Now it's basically floating, so that's zero, and then you adjust the little dial on the counterweight to zero. And you're at zero. Now the best way to do this is to also use a pressure gauge. Uh, these help when the old-fashioned bouncing method isn't quite perfect, so we're going to do that in this video as well. But that is a rudimentary way, I would say, to uh, get it ready. All right. So one thing you need to do is look up what the, sty what the stylish pressure range of your uh, cartridge is. So I'm going to go do that on my computer right now, and we're going to find out what we need to set this thing to. Okay, I'm at Ortophone's website here, and they recommend a tracking force range between 1.6 and 2 grams, with the recommended being 1.8. So we shall set this up for 1.8 grams. So as far as the upgrade path of this Orderphone cartridge, it looks like you can upgrade to the blue, which, or, um, not Orderphone, uh, Fluence does sell. Uh, with their turntables in their lineup, you can get the red or the blue, but you can also get the silver. The silver is the highest you can go on this cartridge before you have to upgrade cartridges. Personally, I'm probably going to stick with the red, unless I come by a bl unless the blue is just that much better, or I come by a blue for a cheaper price. The blue stylus is almost $200 which is why I'm kind of avoiding it, because that's really expensive for just a stylus. So, red is probably what I'm going to stick with. It's, it's, it's fine for my listening, so... Yeah, but you can upgrade it, as you can see here. You can go up to blue or silver. And of course, that's a matter of just spinning this until it's at 1.8. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 0.1, Yeah, this isn't a very specific uh, uh, gauge on the on the uh, weight either, so it's better to use the tracking gauge. Let me get that out. Okay, so we're at 0 0.92. So let's move this to 1.5 and see where we are on the scale. We're at 1.59, so it's not as accurate as I thought it was. So, let me play with this and we'll... Okay, I got exactly 1.8 grams out of it. 
and it's been calibrated correctly using that uh, scale there so we are good to go now now the tone arm is balanced properly you want to set the anti-skating to the same value as the weight of the counterweight so 1.8 on the weight 1.8 on the anti-skating is how that works the other thing we should do is see if I can get on camera how accurate the speed is on this thing uh, I have a, a vintage uh, strobe card or strobe disc as it really should be called um, that uh, lets you look at the accuracy of several speeds it does all three important ones 33 45 and 78 and it has it at 50 and 60 cycles or Hertz nowadays so what we want to be looking at if I can get it on there is the 33 and a third 60 cycles so I don't think this light is correct in terms of frequency but this the LED I have in this lamp is so let's see if uh, my camera will pick up what this is supposed to look like so let me raise the tone arm there as we uh, start the record you see that stripe in the middle that speed looks very dead on to me so that's pretty accurate let's try 45 okay so 45 is this one at the very outer edge this you should see be very consistent as well so it kind of needs to get up to speed first that is very consistent speed the speed on this is dead on like they really got it right I think that uh, special servo controlled motor they have in here really did wonders for the performance so the speed on this is very very accurate according to my strobe disc so that's very very good okay and after blabbering about this thing forever I think it's time we test this thing out with some slug bug shout out to slug bug for making some pretty cool music uh, so I have this thing hooked up to a Technics new class A uh, stereo system not the most audiophile high-end thing in the world but you know what for my needs it's fine so turn super bass off and we will turn the big speakers on we'll give it a shot there so obviously I need two hands to put the record on so hold on okay so stick this on 33 get a nice little LED to show that it's on and we shall give this thing a try alright I've got slug bugs uh, truck month queued up we're gonna go listen to nervous man music and see what comes out of the speakers. Is it going to be magic? Is it going to be Nirvana? Let's see. very very good cartridge speed sounds very steady sound is very rich now one thing we mentioned earlier was that this thing has auto stop and obviously when you turn the turntable on and you move the arm around starts the record stops the record but the way it auto stops is interesting if it's the same as the RT81 80 and 81 uh, it keeps it keeps the record going for a while a certain number of revolutions and then it stops so let's see what we can do here let's give you an example of that and then it should stay in there for a while a certain number of revol revolutions which is good because some records actually have some little hidden gems pressed into that part of the record that you can hear the Beatles uh, Sgt. Pepper is one of those so it should keep going for a while and then eventually it will stop after I've heard like 10 15 seconds something like that we'll have to time it using the video or you can time it using the video 
Maybe I'll put a subtitle down below or something. But it'll stay going like that for a while, and then there it goes, it stops. So, this is what I like to call a delayed auto stop. I think that's the best way to describe this feature. So, if you get one of these and it keeps going, that's normal when you have auto stop on. Uh, it'll keep going for a while, and then it will stop. And then you pick the needle back up, move it over, it'll start again, and then when you move it back into position, into the home position, rather, it will... Uh, it will stop the record. So that's a unique implementation of uh, auto stop. I actually like that because you get to hear those little inner groove Easter eggs on some records. This cartridge has a much more full bodied sound than the uh, uh, inexpensive Audio Technica cartridges that I'm used to. I have a couple of those, and the brightness kind of varies between a couple of them, but this Ortophone 2M Red cartridge is excellent. I think I'm going to be using one of these for a long time. And that was just an example of it playing a record. It's a very, very nice cartridge. It gives the sound a much more full-bodied, rich, and uh, fully baked experience. Uh, it's the kind of sound that you get out of a turntable where you can just sit yourself in the middle of the sound stage and you're right there listening to all the instruments. It has that sort of sound to it, which is very nice. If I were to compare the sound of that Ortophone 2M cartridge to the cartridge that's in this JVC I've been using, I would say the JVC has a much thinner sound. It's definitely not as full-bodied. I mean, it's a pretty good sound, but the body, the soul, the bass, the richness just isn't there in comparison. So, while this is alright, that Fluence is a big, big, big upgrade from this thing. So, I'm not getting rid of this thing by any means, but that Ortophone cartridge is really good, and I'm very impressed by it. So, you've heard this turntable play, you've seen me assemble it a little bit, and you've heard an example of what this cartridge sounds like when it comes out of my stereo system. Not quite a direct hookup experience, but um, I think there are other videos on YouTube that will show how this cartridge sounds uh, better than I can with different music. So there is that. I would check those out if you're really interested in that cartridge in particular. The turntable on the other hand, on the other hand is uh, very good. Uh, the motor is stable, the speed is stable, the belt mechanism I really approve of. It, it works just like the old Empire turntables did where it goes around the entire platter so you get very good speed stability and very low wow and flutter of 0.07 percent which just blows me away that that rating is on a turntable like this. Uh, especially a belt drive one. I'm used to belt drive ones that have pretty bad wow and flutter, so uh, it just proves that you can get a good belt drive turntable. You don't necessarily need direct drive if you're just listening to music. A listening table that has a good belt drive system, a good idler system, and or good direct drive is fine. But a lot of people will probably poo-poo new turntables like this and say you should just buy vintage and get a good direct drive one and save some money. You can do that uh, and get lucky with it. I didn't, however, with this particular Sony PSX5. Uh, this turntable has been nothing but trouble over the years that I've owned it. And I could get another vintage one, but I wanted something with a warranty. I wanted something that I could depend on and I could just buy and maintain for decades new. So that definitely fits the bill as far as that's concerned, which is excellent for me. Uh, every part of this turntable feels like it had a lot of care and effort put into the engineering right down to the knob that uh, adjusts the speed and turns the turntable on and off. Feels very high quality, very nice. It's a nice satisfying click when you move the uh, switch, it's, and it's not too... Uh, it's like a soft click too, it's, it's nice premium feeling. The accessories you get with this turntable, including the bubble leveler and everything, are very nice. The fit and finish is good. The wood grain is beautiful. Uh, the only real glaring flaw in the engineering, I think, is that they didn't put a place for the 45 adapter other than the spindle when you're not using it. But that's a pretty minor flaw, if you ask me. So I'm just going to keep it back there for whenever I need it. The other flaw I noticed when uh, dealing with this turntable is that the anti-skate spring isn't particularly strong. Uh, it's better than the defective ATLP121 by a lot. But uh, when I did an anti-skating test with a CD, uh, I had to put it 
the anti-skating up to about 3 when I have the uh, counterweight set to 1.8. So maybe Fluence could put a stronger spring in there and calibrate it a little bit better. It does work, at least. You just have to adjust it a little high, at least by, in my experience. That's what you have to do. So It works. You just have to set it a little bit high to make it work properly. Uh, so that's a little bit weird, but it's not a showstopper. It's just a bit of a flaw. Still a good turntable. I can still set it the way it need the way it uh, needs to be. So, not a huge issue for me with this particular cartridge. Cartridge sounds great. The Ortofon uh, 2M Red is a very good cartridge. It's a very honest cartridge that gives you a nice full-bodied sound. Uh, I'm sure people will say to upgrade to the Blue if you want to improve the sound even more. So. That, those are the two that uh, Fluence offer. They offer the 2M Red and 2M Blue. They also offer another Ortofon cartridge. The entire reference series of turntables offers Ortofon cartridges. And Ortofon is a really good cartridge company. Uh, I'm glad they went with that because their cartridges are second to none. And they are definitely an upgrade over the Audio-Technica uh, that I'm used to. Uh, usually when you get different Audio-Technica cartridges, at least from the budget range. You'll get differences in the high end, but not so much in the low end, I've noticed. Uh, Audio-Technica also has some higher end cartridges that are sort of in the same price range as this that are very good as well. But this cartridge, having just listened to it, sounds excellent, and you can't go wrong by it, I think. It's very well rated, and I can see why. It sounds very, very good. So I'm glad I went with the RT83 version of this, because that's the... Uh, that's the model you have to get to step into this Ortofon uh, red and blue line of cartridges and styli. And uh, as far as the other parts of the turntable, the motor is very good, nice and stable. The servo-controlled motor is a huge upgrade over the RT80 and 81 that had motor issues and speed problems and whatnot. This is a much higher quality motor, I think. It's very quiet uh, and it does its job very well. The tone arm is excellent quality. Feels like aluminum to me. Uh, and it's a nice matte finish on there, which is really nice. Tone arm is excellent quality. Feels premium. Uh, the dampening on the tone arm is very, very nice and slow, which I like. And uh, the controls feel very nice. The only flaw in the tone arm, I would say, is that the gauge for the weight in the back, they could, they could have put the scale they could have had a little bit, a, few, a little more uh, finesse in the scale, maybe a few more ridges and dots and whatnot, uh, so you could dial it into, let's say, 1.8, which is what this cartridge uh, calls for as a recommended tracking weight, 1.8. So I had to really play with it and use my uh, stylus scale here to really dial it in. So I, I also recommend you get one of these, uh, one of these. They really help. So, there you have it. Uh, my impressions of this are very good. Uh, this is going to be an excellent listening table for me. Of course, this isn't my only turntable. I'm also going to have a, direct, a couple direct drive turntables around for transferring records. I think that's where direct drive matters the most, is DJing and transferring. But for a listening table, this is going to last me decades. I'm hoping that buying this, I can buy this new, like, I, like I've just done and uh, I can just maintain this over the next couple decades and keep it running, keep it going, make it a very long-lasting investment for my music and have it sound great for many, many years to come. So Fluence, kudos to you guys. You made a great, great improvement over your old turntables. The fit and finish is just as good as ever and I, I give this a 10 out of 10. I'm very impressed by it. So. We'll see how things progress down the line as it ages and I use it over the next couple years and whatnot. I'm sure you'll see videos of this again if I encounter problems with it, just so that people know what they are. But I have a good feeling that this thing is going to be pretty trouble-free, especially compared to that Sony PSX-5 that I have. That, that thing was nothing but trouble. And I bet a lot of that is age-related and some of that is design flaw-related. But this seems to be very good. We'll see how it holds up, but for now, I'm very impressed. Definitely full marks from me, as far as a listening table goes. And it's even a good value for money at the $350 that you would pay for the RT-83. 
Now, I suggest if you're interested in these Fluence turntables, you take a look at the entire reference line. That goes from the RT82 up to the 85 or 86, I think. So, the, mo the big difference between all of those is the cartridge. They're all the same turntable, just with a different cartridge in them. So, that it really all depends on what you want. Uh, I went for the 83 because I wanted to get into the line with this cartridge. But you can go even higher, and you can go a little bit lower than this to about $300, I think. And you can go even lower than that to the RT80 and 81 for 250 But I honestly would recommend staying within the reference line. Uh, with the 81, you do get a preamp. But honestly, if you're, if you're spending the, that, this kind of money on a turntable, you should just get an external preamp and get one of these that does not have a built-in preamp. That's my recommendation if you're looking to buy one, something like this. So, I think that's enough out of me about this turntable. My first impressions are very good. It sounds excellent, especially that Ortofone cartridge. I'm very happy with it. Um, and we'll see how this thing lasts. And I guess that's all I have to say about this turntable. You've heard it, you've heard my opinions, you've heard my observations, you've seen me assemble it a little bit, and you've heard my rating of it. Uh, definitely a full marks, a 10 out of 10 on this one. So, very happy with it. Anyhow, that's enough for me about this turntable. If you want to find me on social media, I am on Twitter and Reddit, which will be down in the description. And we also have a Discord for our particular community here. That is also in the description down below. And, of course, there's the comments down below as well for those of you who'd like to chime in on your opinions about this turntable and um, your impressions as well. So, there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed the video of the Fluence RT83 turntable. Have a good one, everybody. Ciao.